morning. morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Elora, my pronouns are she, her, and I will be your service leader this morning. The Unitarian Universalist faith is a treeless community dedicated to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace a pluralist philosophy, opening our hearts and minds to diverse ideas, feelings, and expressions of our world community. Whatever your heritage, whatever your faith, whomever you love, however you identify, you are welcome here today. We respectfully acknowledge that we are located on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous people, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakoda Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Soto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others who his, whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. We ask that you take a moment to ensure that your cell phones and noise emitting devices are silenced. For those who are hearing impaired, the ushers have audio aids available. We are glad to have you with us this morning. We hope you find something in the service today that nourishes your spirit and helps you find and keep your balance. We open um, now Reverend Rosemary with the announcements. Good morning. I see we're needing to put out a few new chairs. My name is Reverend Rosemary Morrison, and I have the distinct honor and pleasure of serving this congregation, this Unitarian Church of Edmonton, and I am very pleased to be here this morning with you all. Um, my pronouns are she and her, and my, my notes tell me to smile <laughs> and look in the camera. Hi, everyone online. Um, so I have a couple of announcements. The first one is that we got a card from the food bank, and I'd just like to read to you what it says in there. Season's greetings from the Edmonton Food Bank. To the Unitarian Church of Edmonton, thank you. Thank you for all your incredible work this year. Your depot, that's us, and thanks to Susan Rattan is coordinating all the volunteers for that, and I sometimes look in, but uh, the volunteers are doing an absolutely wonderful job. Thank you for all your incredible work this year. Your depot has distributed 34,911 kilograms of food to over 2,900 clients so far in 2023, and that will increase a little bit. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, this Wednesday at 7.30 here in the sanctuary, in person only, sorry, but it's like a quiet, dark kind of service and it'll be impossible to do that um, in a hybrid form, or very difficult. Um, so um, it'll be here, and this service is intended to be quiet, reflective, um, come prepared to share or not share, um, but to, to listen to one another about uh, this time of year and how sometimes it's not all lovely for everyone and so we need to acknowledge that and be together to share in these moments. Audrey I think wants to say something but I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> yes you do, yes you do. Uh, sorry. The floor. I just wanted to let people know that there is a card on the desk out in the foyer for Inge Hess. So those of us who have been friends of hers for many years, we want to send support. She's not doing well. Uh, Art and I tried to go down and see her, but the, the traffic uh, stopped us at uh, Red Deer. So it's on the desk. Thank you. And now for the prelude, um, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen by the Bare Naked Ladies. And now for our chalice lighting. Uh, I will get Reverend Rosemary to do it. Come we out now out of the darkness by Annie Forrester. Come we now out of the darkness of our unknowing and the dust of our dreaming. Come we now from far places. Come we now into the twilight of our awakening 
and the reflection of our gathering. Come we now all together. We bring and illuminate our dark caves of doubting. We seek and bedazzled the clear light of understanding. May the sparks of our join, joining kindle our resolve. Brighten our spirits, reflect our love, and unshadow our days. Come we now, enter the dawning. And now I believe we're doing a hymn. Hymn, uh, the first Noel. What number is that, Reverend? Two, three, seven. Thank you. <laughs> hymn number 237, <laughs> the first Noel. I'm inviting Jones up for the Advent wreath. Hello, everyone. My name is Jones Harvey. I go by the any pronouns. The placing of candles upon a circle of evergreens is an age old tradition. Lighting additional candles each day or week as the light wanes is an important ritual in the lives of many. We are warmed by their glow. We are reminded that the wheel of the season will turn and brilliant lengthening days will return. For us here in this time, the circle of evergreens reminds us that life and love will never end. We light candles each week with anticipation as we know a new season will soon be here. Days will become longer and we know the warmth of the candles will soon be replaced by the warmth of the sun. On the first Sunday in Advent, we lit the candle of hope. Let us now relight that candle as we continue our journey toward the sun and the new life it brings. Let us now relight the candle of hope. Last week, we acknowledged that peace arrives gently and to an open heart. Please relight the candle of peace. The third candle we light in this Advent season is for joy. Where do we find joy? Is it in the simple things like a warm and fragrant cup of tea or in something monumental like the birth of a new family member? In this, the season of sharing, may we find joy in the mundane, the monumental, the familiar and the strange. Joy can sometimes be elusive, so we light this candle to guide our way. Let us light the candle of joy. Thank you.
we will now be sharing our abundance. One of the purposes of this church community is to encourage all who gather here to grow more generous in spirit and action. In addition to supporting this community, we also make a monthly commitment to the wider community. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. We take an offering that allows us to exercise that all important generosity of spirit, an offering that will support this self-supporting church and its many ministries. Um, for the month of December, we are supporting a charity that I will let Reverend Rosemary talk about. As you can see on the screen, the month of December, half of the plate um, for all the services and all of the plate for our Christmas Eve services will be going to the minister's discretionary fund. This fund has been growing over the last couple of years, and I want you to know that I do get requests from people who need help with utilities or eviction notices, um, and I have a conversation with them and I am able to help them out. So if I see this as a real direct way for money or for you to impact someone's life in a very direct way, so I invite you to give generously. And while the, uh, do you want me to just say it? All right. Um, while the offering is being taken, we're going to be, um, there'll be uh, an absolutely fabulous music video being played for us. And then when the music video is over, we will sing together um, from you, I receive. Could you bring down the chalice, uh, the chancel lights, please, John? So we can see it. Thank you. We will now be singing um, from you I receive. Well, being service leader today has been a privilege and a humbling experience. I feel reconnected with the spirit of Christmas and the shared moments of reflection and joy resonate deep within me, creating another lasting memory to cherish. Today, I reflect on the joy of guarding, guiding our congregation through a meaningful celebration, witnessing the unity and the warmth of Mitten Tree reaffirms the spirit of Christmas in my heart. May the echoes of carols and the message of love resonate in our hearts, guiding us into a season of hope and goodwill. We shall now do candles of care and connection. Um, this week we're doing silent candles. Um, each week we take some time to recognize the joys and sorrows that touch our lives. In a ritual practiced by many Unitarian Universalist communities, we light candles to mark these significant moments and events of our lives. For those who are with us online, you may, if you wish, write down your thoughts using the chat icon on your computer. For those in the sanctuary, I ask that you line up single file to light a candle there and there. <laughs> Please use the glass of water to extinguish your, um, your tapper. I invite anyone who wishes to do so to come forward now and light a candle for whatever is on their mind and hearts today. Thank you. 
Hello, hello. Oh, there we go. All right. Obviously, I pushed it twice to the begin. All right. And as we finish up our candles of care, concern, joy, celebration, let us hold each other in our hearts. We are a community that cares about one another, and we live in covenant with one another, trying to do what is best for each other and care, look after, give rides, share food, and grieve and laugh with one another. And I'm asking, I ask Alara to light one last candle for all of those joys and concerns, cares and connections that we still hold and yet need to make. Thank you. We shall now sing a hymn called Holly and Ivy, and I believe the words will appear on the screen. I would like to ask Ren Tessier Harder to come up and uh, share a reading with us, and uh, he'll introduce that. Yeah. Hello, I'm Ren Harder Tessier, he, him. I will be reading Why the Evergreens Never Lose Their Leaves. <clears throat> One day, a very long time ago, the air was getting cold, winter was coming, and the birds had already flown far to the south where the air was warm and there were plenty of berries and seeds to eat. But one little bird had been left behind. It had broken its wing and had not been able to fly with the others. So now it was all alone with winter arriving soon. The trees in the forest looked sheltered and warm so it made its way over to the trees as well as it could to ask for help, hopping and fluttering carefully with its broken wing. First, it came to a birch tree. Beautiful birch tree, it said. My wing is broken and my friends have flown away. May I live among your branches until they come back to me? No, indeed, said the birch tree, drawing its fair green leaves away. The squirrels are trouble enough. I can do nothing for you. You'll have to go somewhere else. I suppose the birch is not very strong, said the little bird to itself, so perhaps it could not hold me easily. I will ask the oak. So the bird fluttered over to an oak tree and said, great oak tree, your boughs are so strong. May I not live on them until my friends come back in the spring? 
Until spring, cried the oak. That is a long way off. How do I know what you might do in all that time? You might even eat all my acorns. Away with you. Hmm. Well, maybe the willow will be kinder to me, thought the bird. So it hopped over to a willow near a brook and said, Gentle willow, my wing is broken and I cannot fly away to the south with the other birds. Can I live in your branches till spring? The willow drew itself up proudly and said, I'm afraid not. You see, I do not know you, and we willows never talk to strangers. There should be other trees somewhere that will take you in. Now the poor little bird did not know what to do, so it started to hop and flutter as best it could, slowly, towards the south. But before it had gone very far, it heard a voice. Little bird, the voice said, where are you going like that? The bird looked up and saw it was a spruce tree that had called out to it. I don't really know, answered the little bird sadly. I can't find a tree to live in for the winter, and I can't fly south with my broken wing. I won't get there before winter comes. Come right here then, said the spruce tree. You can live on my branches. I don't mind. May I stay until spring? asked the little bird hopefully. Of course, answered the spruce tree. Here is the branch where my needles are thickest and softest. So the little bird hopped and fluttered branch by branch up the spruce and nestled in gratefully. A pine tree that stood beside the spruce spoke up and said, my needles are not very thick or soft, but I am big and strong. I can protect you and the spruce from the winter wind. I can help too, said a little juniper bush near the base of the spruce. I'm not very big, but I, I make a lot of lovely berries that you could eat so you don't go hungry during the winter. So the little bird was very comfortable in its warm, soft nest, sheltered from the wind with a belly full of berries. The other trees of the forest looked on and talked amongst themselves. I would not have a bird making a mess of my boughs, said the birch. I wouldn't risk my acorns, said the oak. I never have anything to do with strangers, said the willow, and the trees drew their leaves closely about them. That night, the winter wind came to the woods to play. It blew on the leaves with its icy breath, and every leaf it touched turned brown and dry and fell to the ground. It flitted about the woods happily in this way, but as it neared the spruce, the pine, and the juniper, the frost king spoke out and said to the winter wind, stop. Do not take their leaves, for they have been kind to the little bird with the broken wing. From now on, they may keep their leaves in the winter. So the winter wind left them alone, and the spruce, the pine, and the juniper kept their leaves and remained green all through the winter. They have done so ever since, and that is why they are known as evergreens. Thank you, Ren. What a beautiful little story and beautifully read. Thank you. I'd like to invite you into a time, uh, a brief time of reflection and meditation. Uh, so I'm going to invite you into that time. We'll have a minute or so of silence, and I'll bring you out of silence with um, some, the chimes, and then we will move on to lighting the baby candle. So if there has as we're going into meditation, you might want to think if there has been a new little person that has arrived in your life. We have the baby, baby candle prepared and um, the ritual I will explain after the meditation. To prepare for this quieter time in the service, which will be followed by raucous, but we'll just take a moment now to settle our spirits, to settle our and quieten our minds. And to do that, I invite you always by invitation, never by demand, to rest easily into your chair, to allow the chair to hold you, to find comfort in its strength. To let go 
knowing that you are held by the chair, by this community, and in love. I invite you to focus on your breath. Notice how it comes into your body and leaves again. And in between, your body takes what is nourishing, what it needs to sustain life, to oxygenate, oxygenate your blood. Try to slow that breath down a little bit and follow it as it enters your body. Think about releasing your shoulders letting the weight of them move towards the ground as gravity takes hold. Are there spots of tension in your body that you can breathe into and release? This time of the year can be stressful, busy, demanding. I invite you to let all of that go and just be. We will share some, a minute or two of silence. Holding on to this spirit of quiet reflection, celebrating life, I introduce the lighting of the baby candle ritual. This beloved and beautiful holiday tradition has found its way back to the mitten tree service after having wandered off a little during COVID and beyond. This tradition celebrates new life that has emerged over the past year or maybe years. This ritual, I have been told, is very important to UCE, and I can certainly see why. The wax dripped upon this candle represents a life dear to a UCE member or friend. We are reminded that new life is a gift to all of us for each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are, to quote Yesai Barnwell. We relish and love these new lives. Uh, there are probably those amongst us whose parents, grandparents, friends, or loved one has dripped wax onto this candle to celebrate and love you into being. At this time of waiting for the light to return, I light, I will go down and light the candle, 
representing the gift of new life in your life. These candles symbolize the individuality, richness, and beauty of our family members. If you have a new family member in your life, I invite you to come now to add to this candle, composed of wax and love from all the previous loves of our lives. When you come, if you can face the cameras at the back so that the people on Zoom can see you. And if there's someone on Zoom that you would like to put it in the chat, if there's someone in your life, you would like me to drip wax on the candle for you. And then when after you have done that, to come to the microphone, tell us your name, a little bit about the candle that you are lighting or the wax that you are dripping. My name is Audrey Brooks, and the first, uh, I'm lighting two candles. The first one is for my 14th great grandson, whose name is Keaton, born on October the 7th. The second one is for my fourth great great grandson, Lincoln, who is two years old. Hi, my name is Karen Lewis Caron, and I'm lighting a candle for my youngest grandchild, Thea, who is two, to add to the other three candles um, for my grandchildren, who are now uh, 19, 20, and 22. So this has been a delight, and I haven't been to the church to do, take part during COVID, so this is my first actual service in person. So I'm, I'm happy to be back. Thank you. Hi, my name is Naya, and I'm lighting a candle for my baby cousin Imogen that was born September 11th this year. My name is Yolene. I'm lighting this candle for my first grandchild, um, Piper. She was born last year, uh, December 27th. So she's about 22 months now. Um, and the delight of all our lives. Hi, I'm Yvonne Muro. Um, being Unitarian, I know I can break the rules a little bit. <laughs> I'm lighting my candle for a little life that is about to come into the world any minute now. My niece in Ireland is about to have her second any minute now. 
So this is for her. This, yeah, I was just going to get mine up. This candle, uh, this wax on this candle is for Miles Lucas Krenbrank, born March 14th of this year. Uh, Grandma Gloria Krenbrank on Zoom. My name is Anne Marie. Um, my oldest son, Matthew, and his wife, Sheila, live in Slave Lake. And um, they have a son, which they share with her sister. <laughs> they raised him for the first part of his life, and then his mom decided to uh, take over. Um, but they both call him their son. And so he and his partner, just had their first baby this summer. So that's my first great grandchild. Hi, my name is Teresa. And I have sort of an offbeat, I guess, welcoming of a family member. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. One of my cousins, <clears throat> she has twin teenagers and an older child as well. She took over the raising of a young child from, I think, a fellow family member. So she, we met, got to meet this little one at a family get together this last summer. So she's been sort of a surrogate parent who's got raised in this little one in the family. Thank you. I add can, uh, my name's Rosemary Morrison, and I add wax to this candle for my new grandson, Etienne de la Plante, who I'm trying to learn French for, <laughs> and, um, and his brother, Theo de la Plante. Any, um, a joy in my life, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing my grandchildren soon in Whitehorse. Okay. I love that ritual. That's really nice. I don't know who came up with it, but it is beautiful. I have a very short reflection and then we're going to go into like really short. Uh, the theme this month is mystery. Throughout the centuries and ages, humans have found this time of year mysterious and full of wonder. Rituals and invocations were created to entice the sun to return, to keep the darkness and shadows at bay and to celebrate the slowing down of the earth and our own bodies. Have you noticed that nature is asking us to slow down? Everything else in our world is asking us to speed up all at the same time. It is in moments like these when we say enough of this and we decide to just settle in and rest 
that we are actually doing now what we need to do. We do that here every Sunday morning, the whole year long. And at this time of year, it is even, it is even more important to carve out some time to set aside and renew yourself by pushing against that headlong rush. We here this morning and on YouTube anytime in the future, understand how important that is to our being. It has been done forever. In this time and place, we could be attending choir concerts, strolling Candy Cane Lane, enjoying the River Valley, attending solstice celebrations, cooking and baking. We do this to remember and remind ourselves of our humanity, that we can't just be all rush, rush and not suffer consequences. We do this because we too are part of the earth and the stars and need to have time to be and not do. The Mitten Tree Service invites us to take some special time to have fun and more importantly to remind us that most of the UU world are privileged and we need to look outside of ourselves with compassion and understanding. We offer up to the Mitten Tree a token of what is needed. I invite you to find your compassionate eye this season of waning light and expectation and find a moment to really notice the disparity that is plaguing the systems here and around the world. The mitten tree service, our gifts given to ease the suffering close to home, is a wonderful way to think about how we can help and now on to the mitten tree. Hey everybody. <laughs> it's tree time. <laughs> All right, it's time to decorate the tree. Give the gifts you brought an extra squeeze. Knowing that you are giving more than just a mitten or a scarf, you're reminding a young person who may have experienced trauma that there is still good in the world. You are offering support to a parent who may feel like they are not up for the challenge. You are giving hope to a person who may feel lost and hopeless. With this knowledge, we offer this prayer. Spirit of light and love, may these mittens and hats and scarves bring extra warmth to both the giver and receiver of these precious gifts. May the givers feel lighter knowing that they are blessed with, their, with abundance. May the receivers feel cozy, soft comfort knowing that they are cared for. May we all find contentment in the simple act of giving and receiving in this winter season. Let's decorate the tree.
As we continue and to con and uh, wind up the uh, this interesting UCE tradition, <laughs> which is apparently growing on me. No, it's wonderful. Everybody has so much fun. It's such a lovely thing. And then the tree looks fabulous. But let's just remember for a second why we're doing it. And what a blessing this is to so many people. So let's just take a moment and think about the feet that will wear the socks and the necks that these scarves will adorn and the gloves whose hands and the hands whose gloves, the hands who will wear the gloves and be protected from the cold. Our gifts are freely given. Our hearts are in the right place. And in merriment and fun, we do the right thing. May all those who receive these gifts and may all those who have given these gifts be truly blessed. Let us just take 10 seconds. Close our eyes if you wish and individually and collectively bless the mitten tree and those who will benefit from our gifts. Thank you. Before I introduce our beloved song, I must say my favorite part of Mitten Tree has to be seeing everyone compete to see who can throw the highest. <laughs> we shall now sing our beloved song, O Mitten Tree.
now, as fun as this has been, it is time to extinguish the flame. Um, this is We Keep Its Light in Our Hearts by Maddie Sifentis. I hope I said that right. We extinguish this flame, but we keep its light in our hearts with its message of love and justice, taking it outside these walls to the world we live in until we are together again. The chalice is now its, oh, go ahead. The chalice is now extinguished, but its light lives on in the minds and hearts of, and souls of each one of you. Carry that flame with you as you leave this place and share it with those you know, with those you love, and most especially with those you have yet to meet. Reverend Rosemary. Thank you, Fergie. It's good, thank you. Oh, what a blessed and wonderful time we've had this morning. Thank you to everyone that participated in the service. It was lovely to be here and partake and hear all the voices and all the ideas. Thank you. And now I offer you these words of benediction. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world because things can break and they can be mended, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So I invite you on this Christmas time, at this holiday time, however you celebrate, to go and love intentionally and love unconditionally and love especially extravagantly. The broken world waits for you and your light. Go and share it in peace and in love. Go in peace, gentle people, go in peace. And uh, before we do the chalice or the singing our um, linking song, I, it has been brought to my attention that December 19th is indeed not Wednesday, as I had assumed it was. So stay tuned. I have said the 19th, but you know what? I haven't actually checked to see if the sanctuary is available on the 19th. So <laughs> my plan was to do Blue Christmas on Wednesday. The sanctuary is available on Wednesday. So I will be sending out, I will find out, and we will send out a notice on Monday and make sure that everybody knows when Blue Christmas is. I apologize very much. This is my mistake and my mistake alone. And thank you to those who have brought it to my attention. So stay tuned. Blue Christmas is either Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> and now let us join together. If you're new, we come around the outside or around in funny little circly things. You do not have to hold hands if it makes you uncomfortable. I'm going to sneak in behind you here, and I'm going to turn off my mic. <laughs> 